check out that plate. All right. Or shack barbecue and other things. Regulators! Mount up. Yep. Hey, like that. East Wenatchee, Washington. Yeah, you're about as far away from me as you can be in the U.S., the continental U.S., Lewis. I'm way over here on the East Coast in Florence, South Carolina, and you way up here in Washington State. I can't even get there from here. Lewis sent me a t-shirt. Thank you, Lewis. I'm enjoying this. Yeah, there we go. How does it look on me? It goes good with my Phil and Florence hat. My daughter gave to me back at Christmas. All right, guys. Good to see you today. What we've got going on today is not steak. And it's not chicken. We got us a Boston butt. Uh, 6.9 pound Boston butt. And I'm going to be doing that one up on the pit barrel cooker. It's, yeah, it's going to be another hot day today here in Florence, South Carolina. Up in the high 90s. You know, that's where we are right now. So to keep from having to hang around a cooker, I'm going to put it on that pit barrel and just let it rock. Uh, I got something else I want to show you when we get outside, so stick around. I'll be right back. Yeah, that's my pit barrel. I'm rolling it. That's how I rolled it. You remember this, this little addition I put on here last year? From Northern Company. It's heavy steel. I love it. I'll leave a link in the uh, description box in the show more I love that thing stand by I got one more thing to show you Arbor Fab has got another minion starter basket made for the pit barrel cooker it's the same thing they just cut it down two inches the one for the Weber Smoky Mountain was six inches this one's four inches where it'll slide in this charcoal basket right up under this lift handle and there it is right there it's another one I had one for the Weber Smoky Mountain and they made one for that would fit under that lift handle last time I, I had this full and I just poured lit charcoal out of the chimney into this this time I'm gonna do something different I'm just gonna fill it all up yeah just gonna do it like that. Just fill it up, <clears throat> and I'm not gonna light anything in the chimney. I'm just gonna let everything look full. This is a butt cook, so, and I can <clears throat> take that little basket and put it in my Weber kettle and close the vents and snuff it out if I have any left over. So what I'm gonna do. I'll put this little chunk of apple wood there. I'm going to put this uh, tumbleweed lighter right there. Right there. I'm not even going to put it in the charcoal chimney. I'm just going to light that tumbleweed down in the cooker. I won't have to fool with it anymore. Getting ready to light this minion starter basket. And as you can see, there's nothing lit in there. I've got a basket full and of charcoal. And by the way, it's King's for Blue. And the Minion starter basket. There we go. All right. That's all I'm going to do. That is all. I, mean, I haven't tried it this way yet. Last time I lit this small chimney and poured it in already lit. This time I'm lighting it right inside the starter basket. We're gonna let that go. I'm gonna put the lid on and leave the rods out to start with until this catches. I might just open this up a little bit more to give it a little more air to get started. And then let it go back down according to where it needs to be. There we go. 
If you're interested in one of these minion starter baskets from, uh, for the pit barrel cooker, just go to arborfab.com. This four inch, which works good in the pit barrel cooker. And it'll work good in uh, any other drums, like the barrel house cooker drum. It'll work in that one too. So choose the six inch. Six inch is for the Weber Smoky Mountain or any other large cooker that's got clearance in the charcoal basket area. There's no handle or low grates or anything. Now, if you decide you want one and you go to arborfab.com, make sure at checkout you use the code PIF5, PIF5 for a 10% discount. All right guys, we're back in the kitchen. We're getting ready to put some rub on this Boston butt. And I'm gonna go on first with Killer Hogs, the AP rub, all purpose. It's pretty much his salt, pepper, garlic. Now, on top of that, we're gonna go on next with the Root Boy Rub number two for pork and chicken. You can go to his Facebook channel. Here a while back, Scott from The Real Show Barbecue sent me some of his sauce. I used the Memphis Sweet, but this time I'm going on with the Eastern North Carolina sauce. This is a vinegar-based sauce, yeah. I, I guess you wondered what happened to that sauce, Scott, but here it is. I'm getting ready to use it today. So when we pull this butt up and pull it, we'll be uh, putting that sauce on there. You know I like my vinegar-based barbecue. Man, we've got a hot minion basket right in the center. Let's check and make sure our... Uh, probes are in the right place. They okay, got this one just hanging over the rod, which is fine. And this one, we'll make sure it don't get on the bone. There we go. There we go. Now, we're cooking. Regulator. I'm a regulator now. Y'all go check out Lewis's channel over at R Shack Barbecue. If you like Weber kettles, he's got about 25 of them. I don't know how many he's got, but a bunch of them. It looks like Easter eggs all around his place. He's got all colors. And he's got other cookers too, so go check him out. He's got a cool channel. It's been 25 minutes and we're up to 233 in the pit. And i just like to say, using a charcoal chimney or just lighting the minion starter basket as the charcoal chimney with a tumbleweed starter or whatever little cube starter you use, if you just put that on the top and light it, it's six one, half a dozen of the other. In 25 minutes, we're at 2.37. So, hey, I like that. You don't have to fool with the chimney at all. Just another note, by the time I reset this camera on the tripod to show you putting the butt on, it's up to 288. So once you get over 200, that temperature just flies. Okay, hey, we're up to 311 and I have put my vent back down to coastal setting. It's just barely cracking you know, about a quarter of an inch. Got my rods back in, of course. It'll settle down. And I'm hoping it'll settle on back down to about 270, somewhere along in there. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Oh, look at what we got here to go with our barbecue tonight. You remember back in March when we did some hash? We've got some Piff's hash and rice to go with that pulled pork. Yum. I have a link in the description box of how I made this hash. It's delicious. Guys, it's been about an hour and 15 minutes. We're cooking it around 280, 281 in this pit barrel. 
and the meat's just now gotten up to about 61 degrees. I didn't take this butt out the freezer until last night about 11.30, so I'm thinking it's got a cold spot in the middle, but it'll catch up. When it starts changing, it'll, it'll change quick. All right, let's cover it up. This is at the three hour and 20 minute mark. Let's get around here. Can you see? Got all kind of coals left in there. So the uh, minion starter basket did good. And it's burning good. We got a lot, a lot of cooking time left on those coals. For this 6.9 pound uh, Boston butt. Came off at 205 internal. We're getting ready to season it some more and uh, put some sauce on it. Okay, first thing I need to put these gloves on because this thing is hot. Okay, let's find that bone. Yep. At 205, that's what you're going to get with your bone. And I'm going to take this fat off the top. This fat cap is a little bit, it was thicker on one end and one side than the other. Okay, I'm down to the meat now. There wasn't much left on there that didn't render. Okay, I'm gonna make me some cuts. Okay, normally I put on some apple cider vinegar, but since we're gonna be using this vinegar sauce of Scott's from the Real Show Barbecue, shake it up good. I'm just going to use it, go down in there, give it a good dose, and I'm going to put some more salt on it, some more black pepper, that little bit of rub we use on at the front end, that's not going to be enough to season these big pieces of meat, you always need more, some red pepper. Okay, and I'm going to put on a few red pepper flakes, just a sprinkle. Time you cut all this up, you'll need some of that. And I know Scott Sauce has a little bit of this in it, but you know me, got to have more. Put a little bit more of this sauce. All right, along with Scott's barbecue, I'm also to get some more flavor and mustard based. Uh, sauce. I'm going with some Uncle Albert's. So I'm going with both sauces. I put it back on the pit barrel for maybe even 15 minutes to let this sauce set in and uh, these other spices. Now I'm going to cut it up. Oh yeah. Looks good. Alright guys. The only thing we hadn't done is taste it. So let's reach down here and get us some pulled pork, South Carolina style. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. You taste all those seasonings, the sauces, you know, that vinegar based sauce. And on a sandwich, on a hamburger bun, and a little bit of slaw maybe that's killing it and you don't really need any hot peppers because it's got red pepper in it which is hot all right guys just capping it all off the minion starter basket from arbor fabricating it did a great job like i said before you can either light it in a chimney and pour it in or just Fill the whole thing up and just put a starter cube uh, right in the top. And in about 25 minutes, you're at 235, 240, 250. Uh, six, one half dozen the other. Other than that, that's the only hiccup I had. It took about seven and a half hours to do this uh, 6.9, right at seven pound butt. One more time, I want to say thank you, Lewis. For the shirt, our shack barbecue, I love it. Thank you, Scott, for the Eastern Carolina barbecue sauce. Thank you, Sal, for the root boy rub number two that I used all on this cook. 
Let's check out that hash and rice. Hold on just a minute. We're gonna start off with some rice. When you come to South Carolina, you get rice and hash with your barbecue. Yeah. Woo, this is some hash I made homemade back in March. I'll put a link in that to that video. You see that? And let's go in here for some of this barbecue we made today. I got it sauced down nice. Yeah. Check out that plate. All right. All right. Here's that good looking plate. We'll just get us a little rice and hash with a little bit of that barbecue mixed in there with it. Check that out. For your heart, you know what I'm going about. For your heart, the coleslaw just made today. Mm -hmm. mm. I couldn't have this big long video and not show you my plate. There we go. Janet has been uh, busy all day doing some other things, so she wasn't here to to uh, hold the camera to help me close this out. But, uh, she says hello. Say hello, Jeff. <laughs> she's in there in the recline, in her leather chair, resting because she's worn out. You know what, I'm kind of worn out myself. So, all right, till next time. Sorry, Naira. <laughs>